I mentioned in an earlier page that R squared really shines in showing which explanatory variable has the most effect on the response variable. And we can really see that here in this question. So this is a real study that was done in 1997 um, regarding men's romantic popularity, right here, which is the response variable, y. So when you want to know, hey, what's the response variable? That's what it is. It's the men's romantic popularity right there. All right, so you can see there are several characteristics. And this is written it out in a paragraph form, which is not always the way we see this. Um, sometimes we see this in a chart, sometimes we see it in a table, um, but here we're seeing it in a paragraph, which is fine. So that's your why is your men's romantic popularity. And I've asked in this question, which is the strongest relationship and explain. I'm actually also going to ask in future the weakest relationship. So I'm going to ask for both of those. All right, well, the strongest relationship, you have to look through the list and figure out which has the strongest R squared. That's how we measure strength. We measure strength with R squared. All right, so let's remind ourselves that when we look at R squared and we want to gauge strength, strong values are over here on this side. Weak to no relation are over here on this side. So the closer the R squared value is to 1, the stronger it is. And the closer it is to 0, the weaker it is. All right, so the strongest relationship would be, well, look at the R squareds. We have an R squared of 0.47, an R squared of 0.48, R squared of 0.43, R squared of 0 0.44, 0 0.37, and 0 0.1. So the strongest relationship is that 0.48. So it's best dressed best dressed because the R squared value, which was point, uh, 0 0.48, is the highest or largest value. The weakest relationship, by contrast, would have the lowest R squared value. And so that would be a potential for financial success, right? The potential for financial success only led to an R squared value of 0.1. So I'm going to write that potential for financial success because the R squared, which was 0 0.1, was the lowest or the smallest, whichever way you want to think about it. That's what R squared is really great at. The bigger the value of R squared, the stronger that relationship. The smaller it is, the weaker that relationship. Easy as that. All right, now how do we find R squared? Well, we find R squared using StatCrunch in the same way that we have throughout Chapter 4. So if we go to the data set in StatCrunch, which again, we can find by looking up free reduced among the free data sets. And we go to stat, regression, simple linear. We choose the x value variable, the y variable, and then we just say compute. And again, it gives us these huge window. It also gives us the graph, which is nice. And in that huge window, we don't need the bottom box at all. Um, we don't really need the middle box, the center box either, other than the center box does tell us slope and the intercept, fine. But what it's asking me for right now is the R squared value, which is right here. SQ stands for squared, stands for the, to the second power. So that is our R squared value. So that's the co um, coefficient of determination. So the coefficient of determination is R squared, which is, I'm going to, put an approximation sign because I'm rounding here, 0 0.473, or if you will, 47.3%. It's very common with R squareds to write them as a percentage rather than as a decimal because of the interpretation script, because of how we have to interpret them. Now let's write our stat crunch path for ourselves. So that way we know how we did it. It's the same way we do everything in Chapter 4. So you go to Stat, 
then regression, then simple linear. Easy as that. And you're going to look for r dash sq is r squared. I just added a little note to that. All right, now let's interpret the r squared. So for many of the scripts in this course, we kind of can play a little fast and loose with them. We can kind of nudge them around and write them slightly differently. That's not the case with the r squared script. You really want to follow this script exactly. And I did add a little note here. You want to be sure to write that r squared as a percentage. Do not write it as a decimal. You have to turn it into a percent. So you say r squared percent of the total variation in y, that's the one time you have to write something of your own, you have to give the context for the y variable, the response variable, is explained by the least squares regression model, right? Or the least squares regression line, or the regression line, or regression model. Like, you can write that one of a few different ways that we've seen. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to say follow the script for r squared, or I guess I could call it the r squared script, exactly. Do not deviate from that script. That script is kind of key. It's written the way that it is for a very particular reason. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write it as a percentage. We don't use the decimal version, we use the percentage version. So we'll say 47.3% right, of the total variation in, now why was this right here? So you just write it out, the percent of students passing the math test. The percent of students passing, it's a state math exam, is explained by the least squares regression model, or regression line, either way. That's it, right? Don't mess with it. Don't deviate. Just leave it as it is. This part right here, the whole percent of students passing the math test, all that jazz, that's the y, oh, I'm going to say it right here, the y in context. Now, what in the world are they talking about? Well, if you look at the graph, you can see that the dots are kind of all over the place, right? Some schools, these are each representing a school, some schools scored higher on the math test and some schools scored lower on the math test. The line is accounting for 47.3% of the variation in the y values, why some schools are low and some schools are high. That line accommodates for that to a certain extent. And this value is measuring that extent. It's measuring to what extent does this line accommodate for the fact that some values are high and some values are low. That's what we're saying here. 47.3% of the total variation in y right, in that up and down in this, can be explained by the line, right? So the line is doing a decent job of explaining the variation, but there's a lot more that we don't understand why some schools score high and some schools score low. And notice, right, r squared is written as a percent. Do not write it as a decimal. Now I want to remind TID4 folks how to find R squared. So if you're not working with the TID4, just skip ahead to the next video. All right, I gotta go grab my TID4, one second. All right, so in the TID4, you wanna go to stat number one, edit, and enter your two columns of data. And then you're gonna go to stat, go to the right to calculate, pick number four, or technically number eight would work, either one. But I'll pick number four, that's the one we most often use. List one, list two, go down to calculate, press enter. And the R square value is right there, 0.473. It's the third from the, or the second from the bottom line. And that's it. That's how to do it.
So if you want to write instructions for yourself, you could do it over here. So TI84, it's stat, then calc, then number four, lin reg.